Hello, how are you? I think people have always been experimenting with all the plants that are around them. People want to know, well, what's this plant do? Is this edible? There is something in, in excess of 400,000 flowering plants now described to science. It'll get up to half a million. How much higher than that, we don't really know. But of those, 20, only 20, supplies the enormous majority of all the food that we ever eat. 20? Of, of plant of food. 400, of 400,000? Out of 400,000. Wow. And actually three, only three, provide more than 50% of the calories that any human ever eats. Rice, wheat, and maize. That, 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 that anybody ever eats. If we go this way, I change the Female healers. Since I, hmm? Healing lady plants? Well, the interesting thing, of course, is that the nuns were actually responsible for, for a lot of um, the medicinal requirements people for many, many centuries. People went to the nuns for their, for their medicines. And so they used to nurture all the medicinal plants um, around. So you, and you still find occasional remnants. This is the birth work. One can see, perhaps a little fancifully, a somewhat uterine shape to the flower. Yes. You can, I mean, you can see fair. that, can't you? You can see, you know, there's, there's a uterus and a vagina in the opening. It's got a not particularly pleasant smell. Yeah. It? Yeah, you wouldn't want to take that, would you? Um, we would have induced abortion. Almost any poisonous plant will induce an abortion or eased um, the childbirth. Is this is still used today by people that want so ideal births. I've never known anything like this being used for that, and <laughs> I think I'd be rather wary. But I sincerely hope nobody ever takes anything if they do. <laughs> Don't yeah. try this at home. <laughs> No, I wanted to find you some deadly nightshade. Deadly nightshade? Do you know about, you know about deadly nightshade? I know nothing about deadly nightshade apart from it's it, but... deadly. Hang on, hang on. I think they've... it's deadly and it's a nightshade. Yes, that, 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 this is a good start. But, but... <laughs> oh, here it is. Here's the deadly nightshade. Like Harry yeah. Potter plant, isn't it? The, the mandrake? Yeah. Is it? Is it not? I, I know it from Harry Potter. Sorry, I know my plants. I don't know my Harry Potter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're the things that scream in Harry Potter. They do. Oh, they do. Yes, they scream when they pull. You, they scream when you pull them up. In real life, they said to. Um, oh, okay. I... Because the the root is humanoid. Yes. And um, and that, and that's the plant there. That's the root. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't, it. doesn't, doesn't look like, doesn't, doesn't look much at the moment. It's just yeah. just the rosette. Looks like a dandelion. Um, I'm honest. Almost, yes. They put, the, they put the deadly nightshade in a different place. It's here. This plant is really very dangerous. It's too early for them at the moment, but those flowers are going to turn into the blackberry about that across, okay. which looks very succulent and edible. And that's why it's dangerous. I mean, most of the poisonous plants you wouldn't think of eating anyway, but that you would think of eat, eating. And it's deadly. It, it, is, it is a very, very poisonous plant. One of the nice things about it is it's called, you'll notice it's called a tropa, belladonna. Beautiful lady. Yes. And you think, deadly nightshade is called after a beautiful yeah. woman. Very interesting thing about that is that fashionable ladies of the 19th century used to put tiny drops into their eyes because it has the ability to make the iris of the eye uh, dilate. Oh, God. Um, and that is a very attractive feature. So sort of um, the big um, eye look. Extremely dangerous. I think some even blinded themselves with it. You don't want to be messing around yeah. with it, but people did it anyway. Tolkien, come and he used to sit under a pine tree, and that was what it meant to have been the source of his tree people, the Ents. Ents? Yes. I'm right about Ents, yes. yes. Um, uh, but I've seen rather a dramatic thing happen to that, that pine tree because um, the pine tree which had been planted in the early 19th century uh, dramatically snapped and, and fell over oh, uh, wow. half of it did and it was at a time of a, of a party going on uh, uh, in, the, in the garden and it could have been utterly disastrous mm. fortunately there was a some musicians i think underneath it and they heard a crack immediately reported to the garden staff one of the garden staff had the presence of mind and the thing we need to evacuate this immediately mm. everybody did and five minutes later the tree fell down um, it was about here, um, was Tolkien's tree. I'm wondering if it was that, or is that pine that they've planted there? I wonder if that's a replacement for it. I'm not sure whether they're... Yes, that's right. This tree was raised from seed from the original. It was nine years ago, 2014. So it was, it was, just, it was just there, and this is a seed from it. Um, so, uh, and so they're now growing up a new one to replace the, uh, the old Tolkien tree. But yes, he used to sit underneath Incredible. it. It was an enormous tree. 
Um, well, you can imagine it was planted in 1830. It was in, it was a huge tree, so 180 years old by then, by the time it died. And he used to sit under it and think great thoughts, as you yeah. do if you're talking. <laughs> so, so just um, literally right here, Tolkien's writing Lord of the Rings. Yeah. If we go in here, um, this is the Rainforest House, and this does have, um, it has some fascinating plants here. This, is it, it might be steaming up now, I think it probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a coffee plant, not flowering or even producing any seeds. That's coffee. Oh, no, it is producing seeds, oh, it's, it's got the green, see the green? Yeah. Those are going to be the coffee beans. Um, there's lots of them, there's four oh, wow. them. that is literally coffee. That's coffee as, as, as she grows, yes. Wow. Um, actually thrives in, in semi-shade, okay. so you want to keep the trees above it, which obviously from a conservation point of view is really good, mm. rather than chopping a lot down and planting oil palm trees, which, which yes. does tend to be rather a devastating way of dealing yeah. with the rainforest. Um, so coffee tends to be rather a good crop as far as that's concerned. Good news for people? Well, yes. I mean, I, I like my cup of coffee. And, and, uh, <laughs> here's a pineapple. Oh, it's yeah, a yeah, pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple growth. Now, <laughs> I don't know whether again, people think about the pineapple, because the pineapple is it's a fruit, right? But actually it isn't. It's a multiple of fruits all put stuff together. Because if you look at the pineapple carefully, each one of these pieces here is a fruit. And they join oh, okay. they join up together um, almost hexagonally like a bee um, beehive, mm. you know. They then merge to form the pineapple that you and I might like. And the reason you've got that very fibrous, when you cut open a pineapple, you know, there's a very fibrous bit in the middle. Yes. That's the stem. That's okay. the stem with the flowers on, all, all around it. So oh, what you're wow. getting in the pineapple is the, the fruits are clear from, from those flowers all around. And that fibrous bit is the stem in the middle. And that's why, so the stem, the stem never stops being a stem and it produces then leaves on the top. And that's how pineapple works. I had no idea. Yeah. Is pineapple the only one that's a no. compound fruit? No, no it isn't. The most obvious and, uh, one, and the oddest one in many ways of all, is the fig, which is another, oh, okay. which is another compound fruit. The plants are endlessly fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> you can see why I can get uh, why, I'm, why why I love plants. Look at this place. One of the interesting things here is looking at that one there, uh, mammoth, cactus. and then this one Whoa. here. And <laughs> again, you know, if you ask normal, you know, most people will say, well, what are these? They'll say they're cacti. Yeah. This one is a perfectly good cactus. Yes, it is. You'd be absolutely right. And it's the kind of thing that John Wayne would have ridden his horse by, isn't it? In, 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, in your traditional Western, right? <laughs> that one isn't a cactus at all. In fact, it's com it completely and utterly different. And that's what's so interesting about it. Oh, it's but it's, it's, it's fundamentally, in many ways, it's the African equivalent of a, of a cactus. That's more closely related to the rubber plant than it is to, to, the, to the cactus. There, there are some, some other uh, fascinating plants here. The, the agave, the century, the century plant, I mean, look at that plant. It's yeah. just so huge. Um, yeah. And they're known as century plants because they're meant to live as a rosette for a century before they flower. And the last time one of these flowered was here, and it shot up um, to the roof in the space of about a month. Wow. Um, I mean, you could practically watch it grow. It was growing so fast. <laughs> but, and and it, then it produced thousands upon thousands of flowers um, uh, uh, all over it. It was a pretty, it was a pretty wow. amazing sight. With a rosette that size, it's just, it's just going to be some huge it's inflorescence. Hit the ceiling. It's going to hit the ceiling keep going. And, and fast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I say I thought it might do it this year, but it, um, it hasn't. It's got a big bud in the middle. Of these century plants, produce things that at least some people like. A thing called agave tequilana it grows in Mexico and produces perhaps one of the most obnoxious drinks ever created <laughs> by. Humankind, but the Mexicans persuade themselves that they like it. They call it tequila. But anyway, yes, uh, that um, was my guess. <laughs> uh, um, this also has the, the world's most extraordinary plant. I've shown you a few extraordinary plants, but I'll show you. This is the world's, the, most, the world's extraordinary. most extraordinary plant. That thing. Do you see where it's called? Velvicia mirabilis. Velvicia yeah. mirabilis. It's just like rabbit ears. Just like rabbit ears. Um, sort of. <laughs> those leaves will grow for a thousand years. Oh wow. They just carry on growing. They fray, they decay at the, at, at the, at the tips. It's also very rare, sadly. And it's yeah. so different from everything else. You think, this plant shouldn't exist. This marvellous tree, um, this, is, this is the ginkgo. 
This is a tree with architecture. I mean, look at it, look at it. What's so extraordinary about this plant is that it is in a completely unique group. There's this one species all on its own, and it's totally distinctive. There is the, you know, unmistakable. The, the leaf is a unique shape. So it's known as biloba, ginkgo biloba, because uh, it's got the two lobes. But it's, it's such a distinctive shape with the, the veins you see sort of coming and then kind of splaying out like that. And, um, it's and beautiful. It, uh, it's, it's, yes. I'm guessing it's not British. It's, you're guessing correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's even odder than that. It, it, everything, almost everything about this plant's odd. It is un un unknown in the wild. Oh, okay. And, and yet it's the survivor of this one group, which used to be quite widespread, come um, uh, dinosaur times back in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. It's completely different from all other plants. It's a totally unique plant all on its own, just one species in a complete group separate from all the others. What do you think that is? It, because the others have died out, the, fossil, the fossils of ginkgo, some of the fossils of ginkgo in the, um, from, from the Jurassic, um, even I say from before the Cretaceous, look so like this that if it weren't for the fact they're separated by 120 odd million years or whatever it is, they could be the same species. I mean, that's absurd. You know, that, that, that something should have yeah. changed so little. It, it's one of the world's great plants, <laughs> the, the ginkgo. 